Order members, order members, order. Item 5 in the order of paper, the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do not adjourn. And in conjunction with the Business Committee, I have given leave to Mr. Robbins uh, Newton to raise the matter of investment in the Cumber Greenway. The proposal of the to topic will have 15 minutes. I call Mr. Robin Newton. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And, um, I do thank the Minister uh, for giving her time out of what I know are very, very busy, very busy and many competing priorities. I think at the start, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I would like to pay tribute to those two members, uh, permanent secretaries, who were in the department uh, prior to uh, us restoring uh, the Assembly, namely Mr. Peter May and Ms. Petrina God Godfrey. And as permanent sacks, they made what contribution they could make uh, to the development and investment within the Cumber Greenway. So it is uh, appropriate, I think, that we acknowledge the, the fact that, that, they, that they did that. Cumber Greenway is, is a seven mile route running from East Belfast, uh, potentially right through to Cumber itself. And indeed, it is noted, recognized, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, by a number of those organizations who have an interest in uh, the cycling, well-being, health uh, areas. And indeed, Cycle NI have made the comment that it's from the Hollywood Arches to Dundonald, the Cumber Greenway provides a tranquil green corridor through East Belfast, recognizing it as, as a great asset. Walk NI comments that the route provides a tranquil green corridor through East Belfast and ending by passing through a rural landscape into Cumber. Sustrans, uh, who have, a, I believe, a major part to play in the development of, of the route, comment that the Cumber Greenway provides local people with a traffic-free route for walking or cycling from Cumber through uh, to East Belfast. And indeed, um, the organization Discover Northern Ireland comment that the most remarkable feature of the Greenway is the feeling of rural escape from urban bustle. So each of those organizations, uh, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, recognizes uh, what an asset the Cumber Greenway is. I'm also pleased to say that Belfast City Council and Lisburn City Council both unanimously supported a motion uh, calling for investment in the Cumber Greenway. And Belfast City Council established a working group as part of, as a result of that, that motion. I look forward to the Arts and North Down Council giving consideration to a similar motion uh, and indeed working with the department uh, for, for uh, the development of the. The two councils that have passed it, have passed the motion, uh, noted the benefits which the Cumber Greenway facility has created in allowing Belfast citizens, Belfast citizens, not East Belfast citizens, uh, and visitors to the city the opportunity to become increasingly active and to promote increased health benefits. They also called upon the Department for Infrastructure to develop through a collective approach a strategic, political and costed plan for the Cumber Greenway as part of the recently launched strategic plans for greenways across uh, Northern Ireland. I think, Mr. Speaker, the, the, we need to take notice of the benefits that greenways have in general brought, brought to Northern Ireland. And I do believe that the best model of, of a greenway is the Conswater Greenway in fact, I have often referred to the Conswater Greenway as a sister project, or the Cumber Greenway as a sister project of uh, the Conswater Greenway. 
and indeed that the both, both the Conswater Greenway and the Cumber Greenway link together. And the continuance of one, there is a natural flow from one into the other at the junction of, of Hollywood Arches. In many respects, the Conswater Greenway has been described as a model, an exemplar of best practice for the development and delivery of large-scale, multi-partner, complex projects with multiple objectives. And that was part of the assessment of the Conswater Greenway. And that, that indicating that this is reflected in widespread national and international interest through numerous awards and accolades, including recognition as one of the world top 200 most influential projects by the Institution of Civil Engineers. And there is no reason why the Cumber Greenway, with the right vision, with the right support, and with a holistic approach to the development of it, shouldn't carry the same accolades. It is indeed, it has the potential, the Cumber Greenway has the potential to be a living landmark and a valuable life-enhancing uh, asset. In terms of the potential, the overall potential of the Cumber Greenway, it has the potential to offer increased levels of walking, increased levels of cycling, increased dog walking, and indeed, the infrastructure, and I'm pleased that the infrastructure is in to allow lighting to be applied to that part of the Cumber Greenway from Hollywood Arches right up to the Billy Neal playing fields. And that is a very positive thing. We need to move, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to the next stage of installing the lighting. And I hope that the Minister will see that that is a worthy investment uh, for, for the future. But it goes further than that, further than the, just the, 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 the activities of walking, cycling and dog walking. Like its sister project, the Conswater Greenway, it has the opportunity to apply to provide play facilities. It has probably a better opportunity than the Con Conswater Greenway to encourage wildlife to encourage the development of shrubbery along the route, route, to develop the bridges that are along the route, and indeed to pay tribute to the long history of it as it was a former railway track. And indeed, a number of the uh, station platforms are still in situ, and there are groups that are interested in bringing those station platforms at least back into visual uh, uh, use. It has the potential for events and indeed overall the potential to contribute to a much more holistic and a much more healthy uh, lifestyle for our uh, communities. It also has, and greenways across the whole of the UK have the opportunity and do have the opportunity, but Cumber Greenway has the opportunity to contribute to increased business and the creation of businesses be that with the existing Hollywood traders or potential traders that have bought onto it, the potential development that there might be at the Hanwood Centre along the route, the increased potential of the cycle facilities that uh, have been provided by Lisburn City Council, Lisburn and Castlereagh City Council, and indeed the potential for guest houses who, who have bought onto. But Mr. Speaker, there, Deputy Speaker, there is a major opportunity where the Cumber Greenway reaches Dundonald Village. Now, Dundonald Village is described in the current plan, and I accept that Lisburn and Castlereagh City Council are working on another plan. It is described by about six lines as a village with a high level of uh, transport or, or, or vehicular traffic through it, and a number of boarded up properties. And it's a shame that you can actually rent a property in Dundonald Village if you pay the rates. 
You don't need to pay rent. You can pay the rates and you'll get a, a property in the Donald village. Travel a mile down, mile down the road to Bolly Hackamore and you'll pay top dollar for a property renting. A mile down the road. So there is the potential for the Cumber Greenway to actually link with the Cumber Road shops and to link with Dundonald Village, providing increased business opportunity and an opportunity to actually enhance Dundonald Village. A significant feature that would be if we were to invest in, in the um, Cumber Greenway. So it will be indeed a quality, be an enhancing the potential of the village life in around uh, uh, Dundonald Village. It's not possible to take and think of it just as somewhere to walk or somewhere to cycle. We need to think of it in a holistic manner and we need to think about what abuts on to it on either side of it. The potential for for the Cumber Greenway uh, as a whole. I am pleased, I have to say, Mr. Speaker, I, I, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I am pleased that the Minister in her former life, uh, and indeed in her current uh, role, has been a, a, a supporter of, of the sort of uh, Greenway movement, uh, the cycling movement and so on. And I am pleased that uh, uh, as I'm not quite sure what your role was here, but as Nicola Mullen, anyway, an elected representative, she paid tribute and said, I personally enjoy the cycle along the Cumber Greenway. And indeed went on to say that as a party, we are keen to explore further development of greenways as a whole. And then added to that, indicating that the SDLP believes that Northern Ireland needs a long-term and dedicated strategy to improve cycling provision. And here we have an opportunity to actually do that and indeed to do much more than uh, just the cycling strategy. And indeed with this I will uh, finish, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Within the um, document, uh, the Department for Infrastructure, Exercise, Explore and Enjoy a Strategic Plan for, for Greenways. The, the comments are made in terms of their vision, the vision of the department, the aims of the department, and the objectives of the department. And they refer to it as the Minister of Infrastructure is committed to active travel and strongly supports improving health and well-being for everyone across the region. In setting out the strategic plan for Greenways, the Minister's vision is a region where people have ready access to a safe, traffic-free environment for health, active travel, and leisure. I think the, the, the case for investment in the Cumber Greenway is indisputable. It brings so much to, not just to the, in that corridor from East Belfast through to Cumber, not just for those people who live abutting on to it, not just for the potential of business activity, and not just for the potential of education for our children and use for our children in play areas, but indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker, it brings a holistic approach to improving our health and well-being overall. Thank you. And we now go on to other members uh, in terms of an opportunity to contribute to the German debate. Uh, and they will have five minutes. I call Andy Allen. And to follow the, the, member, the esteemed member for East Belfast and colleague who I've had the opportunity from my time in this house to work with on a number of occasions, and we've worked quite well together. Um, I recall him bringing previous uh, adjournment debates to the House. I'm sure he, he's glad to be back down in this side of the House where he can contribute uh, again as a member on, on the ground in terms of working for the community. And I'm sure he continues to do that in his role as Speaker during his tenure there. Mr. Speaker, or Mr. Deputy Speaker, as the members quite rightly pointed out, the Cumber Greenway is a wonderfully tra tranquil green corridor all the way from Cumber to, to the heart of East Belfast and he's highlighted that the Greenway is about much more than just East Belfast. 
It's about looking at the wider context of the Greenway and all of the positive benefits that flow from it. You know, it'd be remiss of us just to zone in on the cycling and the walking benefits of the Greenway. There's so much more to the Greenways. They bring the potential of footfall to businesses along the, the route of the Greenway. And indeed, Mr. Deputy Speaker, in doing a bit of research prior to this adjournment debate, um, I've come across some statistics and it's estimated for every one pound invested in greenways, the return is up to four pounds out the other end. And it's about looking at greenways in that wider context and the positive benefit that they deliver for our wider communities. Indeed, I had recent representations from local people from the wider community who want to see further investment in the Cumber Greenway and indeed the enhancement of other greenways right across Belfast and Northern Ireland. And I welcome the fact that the Minister's here and I welcome the Minister's positive attitude towards greenways and I welcome um, the, the, the commitment she's giving towards greenways. I've worked very well with the Minister in the past and I'm in no doubt that she will do everything that she can to bring forward and invest in the greenways in that respect, Mr Deputy Speaker. I note that there are plans to uh, enhance greenways in, in that respect. Um, the, the, the current greenway obviously stretches seven miles right, right across and indeed, Mr. Speak, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, from a personal perspective, I know my young children, um, ages 11, 7 and, and 15 months, um, enjoy very much at the weekend going out with their, their nanny Linda uh, and walking along the stretch of the Greenway. Um, so I'm very happy to see the member bring this uh, motion before the House. I'm very happy to support it. I'm very happy to work with the member and indeed my other colleagues across East Belfast and other colleagues across Northern Ireland to see investment in our Greenways and working towards that commitment. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I call Chris Little. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. As MLA for East Belfast and Chairperson of the Assembly Group on Cycling, I welcome the opportunity to speak in support of the outstanding community facility running through my constituency that is the Cumber Greenway. And indeed, I thank my colleague, Robin Newton, MLA, for availing of this adjournment debate opportunity for us to do so collectively. On the wall of my constituency office that I share with Naomi Long, MLA, hangs a letter that we received at a time when a former regional development minister was considering replacing the Greenway with light rail, and it reads, please keep our Greenway. We always cycle on it. The trees give us oxygen and blackberries. Thank you. Oshing Doran, seven years on this planet. I'm glad for Oshing and the many people that use, enjoy and rely on this clean, green, traffic-free cycle and walkway on a daily basis, that the campaign to save and maintain the Cumber Greenway was a success. This seven-mile section of the National Cycle Network is one of the few traffic-free walk and cycle greenways available in Belfast and indeed Northern Ireland, the like of which is absolutely vital to advance the sustainable and active travel provision we need to address climate change, health and pollution challenges facing our population and planet. There are many positive benefits of the Cumber Greenway, transport, physical and mental health, community and business connectivity, and of course, environmental. It is vital, therefore, that we work together to protect and enhance this Greenway. My Alliance Party colleagues and I have consistently worked to protect and develop the Cumber Greenway. This has included working with the Department of Infrastructure, local councils, Sustrans, and the Eastside Partnership to secure the installation of Toucan crossings at key road crossings, such as the Bears Bridge and Kings Roads, path widening schemes, public realm improvements at the Bloomfield walkway section of the Cumber Greenway, and the installation of one of the first, if not the first, bike stations in Northern Ireland at the Billy Neal Soccer Centre. Further improvements are needed, including works at Island Street to extend and link the Greenway to Titanic Quarter, ramps at North Road Bridge, bins, seating, improved signage, better management of green space and enhanced linkage of the Cumber Greenway and Conswater Community Greenway as part of the East Side Greenways and the Northern Ireland Greenway strategies. I have recently corresponded with the Department of Infrastructure to press for the introduction of lighting, as has been mentioned by other members, at key sections of the Cumber Greenway, the like of which has been key to the success of the world-class award-winning Conswater Community Greenway. Indeed, the vision and the future development of the Cumber Greenway 
should be based on the Conswater Community Greenway model of a multi-use linear park and walk and cycleway adopted and maintained to the highest standards possible with the support of local councils in which it is located. I welcome the leadership shown by former Alliance Lord Mayors of Belfast and Lisburn and Castlereagh, Nuala McAllister and Tim Morrow to work in partnership with Sustrans and the Department of Infrastructure to explore and advance this model. I understand that work has been ongoing between the Department of Infrastructure and local councils to progress this approach and I welcome the attendance of the Minister for Infrastructure today to update the Assembly on this matter. Mr Deputy Speaker, the sustainable and active travel, social, health and economic potential of the Cumber Greenway is vast and Alliance Party representatives will give our full support to the Minister for Infrastructure and our elected representative colleagues to work together to do all we can to realise this potential. Thank you. And I call on the Chairperson for the Committee for Infrastructure, Ms uh, Michelle McElveen. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I would first of all like to um, thank the proposer for tabling this German debate. Robin has been a great advocate of both the Cumber and the Conswater Greenway. And I think we can all agree that greenways such as the Cumber Greenway are an investment in health and well-being of all our communities. I've used the Cumber Greenway on numerous occasions as both a pedestrian and as a cyclist, along with my, my colleague Joanne Bunting, and travelling along the Greenway it is evident that it attracts users of all ages and abilities, those on their own, with families, both young and older families, and also with friends. And it presents an opportunity to re-engage with nature and to exercise in a traffic-free environment. And certainly the expansion of greenways in the UK and Europe has proven to be extraordinarily popular and a huge draw for tourists. Having my constituency office in Cumber, I see firsthand the benefit of the Greenway to the town and in particular to the local coffee shops. There are therefore numerous benefits to investments in our Greenway network. The development of the Conswater Greenway has been a great addition to East Belfast with its link to the Cumber Greenway. However, the contrast between the two is stark. The lack of lighting along the Cumber Greenway makes it unsafe and practically unusable once the evening starts to draw in. The fact that the Greenway was constructed without some lighting provision is quite difficult to fathom. Now, while I appreciate that work is commenced um, in East Belfast and that particular end of the Greenway, um, if we are to encourage commuters from my constituency to use it as an alternative to the car, it is imperative that lighting is installed along the full route. While the proposer has talked about the enhancement of the Cumber Greenway as it currently exists, as well as its future management, I'm also keen to see further expansion of the network. As part of a fact-finding visit, I went to the Netherlands to look at the fast cycling route between Arnhem and Nijmegen, and how high-quality, dense cycling infrastructure networks enables local children to cycle to school and also to assess the urban cycling infrastructure in Amsterdam. I also took the opportunity to go to Edinburgh to learn about the lessons learned from their Greenway expansions. I've been a consistent advocate for our Greenways, which is why when I held the post of Regional Development Minister, I launched a fund to enable local councils to undertake feasibility studies into expanding the Greenway network in their areas. As a Strangford MLA, I was delighted that Arts and North Down Borough Council availed of this opportunity to look at an ambitious expansion which would seek to extend the Cumber Greenway through Cumber itself to Newton Arts and onto Bangor, connecting up with the North Down Coastal Path. In principle, a fantastic concept providing a large, circuitous, traffic-free route. However, problems have arisen in the conduct of consultations and how information has been presented to local landowners. It is natural that landowners and residents will have certain reservations. These concerns need managed sensitively. There's a wealth of evidence now available to show how concerns about such problems as antisocial behaviour are largely unfounded and how those living along the Conswater Greenway, for example, have embraced the Greenway. It's little wonder, however, that locals have objected when the vesting word is used. And as we focus on an outcomes-based approach, investment in greenways can meet many of the outcomes, connecting people, enjoying long, healthy, active lives, living and working sustainably and creating places where people want to live and work, to visit and invest. 
So yes, we should improve and expand these fantastic assets, but those charged with carrying out that function need to apply the lessons learned from other schemes within Northern Ireland and elsewhere. We need to ensure there is consensus and acceptance from not only those who use greenways, but those who accommodate them going through or running adjacent to their property. Consensus and accommodation is not obtained through confrontation, but through consultation and engagement. In conclusion, Mr Deputy Speaker, I welcome the opportunity to contribute to today's debate and I look forward to seeing improvements being made to my local Greenway. I call Joanne Bunning. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I feel like at this point I should declare my interest in the policing board <laughs> and that seems to be what I do this weather. <laughs> um, it's been quite the justice week. Um, I'm grateful, Mr Deputy Speaker, to my colleague uh, Robin for, for tabling this motion. There can be no question of the benefits of greenways for physical health, undoubtedly for mental health, and the value of time spent with friends or family, relaxing, winding down, seeing some animals, having a good laugh, and getting some exercise while we're at it. And without reliving all our yesterdays, uh, as my colleague Michelle McElveen has alluded many a time <laughs> on our various health kicks, we spent cycling down from Cumber, right down the Cumber Greenway, right down the Conswater Greenway, and over to Carrick. Now, obviously the benefits in that are cake and ice cream, and neither of us will deny that. <laughs> um, and sometimes you need a bit of incentive, and it certainly worked for us. Um, but the truth about the Cumber Greenway, as it currently sits, is that if you miss time your cycle, you're in pitch black. You're potentially riding through dog mess. You're scared of running over animals rather than seeing them. And you have no idea who else is around. So there are safety issues, there are health concerns, and perhaps then, the Cumber Greenway isn't used to its maximum potential on the basis of some of those issues that could be restored and make it uh, a bit more like Conswater in that regard. As my colleagues have mentioned, Conswater has become, the Conswater Greenway has become an international model of best practice. The folks from Conswater have travelled around the world extolling the benefits of the Greenway. Um, and they have received numerous awards uh, because of the success that they achieved there, not least of which is flood alleviation. But it, it has enormous use, it has a spectacular value to East Belfast and beyond. But the thing is with the Cumber Greenway, it always feels like the Cumber Greenway is the bridesmaid to the Conswater Bride. Now that's not to say that there hasn't been investment. There has, and there's been significant improvement in this last number of years. I remember a couple of years ago on my birthday, actually, going down because Sustrans, the department, uh, there were a number of organisations, both councils, Belfast City Council and Lisburn and Castle Ray, had made significant investment, um, as Robin has, has mentioned, um, installing um, the connectivity for lights and so on, albeit that there's no lights there, widening the path, resurfacing, and then we have Lisburn's investment at Billy Neal, as, as Chris Little has referred to. So there has been ongoing work, and there's no question of the potential. There is so much potential in the Cumber Greenway in terms of connectivity. And the difference that lights would make in terms of use and safety would be immense. Other colleagues have already referred, and there's no point in repeating the benefits with regard to the economy, with local businesses, with housing safety, all of those things, and especially with regard to health, and getting children to set down their gadgets and be outside in the fresh air with their parents, enjoying their young lives and their energy while they still have it, and a lot of us wish we still did. So the only thing I would say to the minister is this, minister, perhaps it's time for Cinderella to become a princess. And I now call Harry Harvey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, Minister. Why would we want to invest in the Cumber Greenway? Is it because of the seven miles of the most wonderful, tranquil green corridor in the UK? 
It's classified as being easy, making it ideal for most, whether leisure walking or cycling. Taken in views of Stormont, Scrabble Tower, the two Harold and Wolf cranes, C.S. Lewis statue and the Titanic Centre. As it is an ideal length of seven miles and taking approximately one hour to complete, and the bonus that is traffic free. Being one of the most popular greenways in the UK, I would welcome any future improvements or upgrades to this popular and well used walkway which promotes health and well being to all its users. Thank you. And members, some interest has been expressed beyond the immediate area, and I'd like now to invite Philip McWigan to comment on the matter of investment on Cumber Greenway. Uh, last can call you. Uh, I accept that uh, I'm not from the constituency, but uh, as everybody sh should know, I have an interest in cycling, so I'm never going to pass up an opportunity to promote cycling and promote investment in cycling. I have actually cycled on the Cumber Greenway uh, only on a couple of occasions, uh, and I concur that it is a great asset. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I would support further investment. Uh, in the Cumber Greenway, and I would support further investment in other greenways. Uh, I want to see the ambitious target of 1,000 kilometres, as detailed in, in the North Greenway strategy, become a reality. I, I want to take this opportunity just to commend Jonathan Hobbs for the work that he has done uh, in, in this field, uh, promoting, pushing, cajoling uh, this strategy of greenways and cycling in general. Uh, I also want to support uh, the work and the contact that I have had over the years with Andrew Greve so and the cycling department for the help that he has been to me in, in promoting cycling. Uh, and I want to thank my party colleague Chris Hazard who introduced the uh, Greenway strategy in 2016. What are Greenways? Greenways create uh, economic activity, they improve cycling and walking opportunities, they improve health through active living, they enhance community identity, uh, and they improve tourism opportunities. In my view, cycling and walking are vital to all of the above, uh, and then throw in climate change and the saving that all of this, and, and the more people we can get cycling and walking and be involved in active transport, the saving that that will uh, produce for our health service, and I mean, we can see the importance of all of this. I hope the Minister is able to invest in Greenways uh, to ensure that momentum isn't lost. Uh, as I said, I want to see the 1,000 the thousand kilometres and much more come to fruition, uh, in particular the two Greenways in my own constituency, the Glens of Antrim Greenway, proposed from Ballymena uh, to Cushendall, and I know that there is uh, good work going on, uh, particularly out around Glenravel, but I want to see that uh, in totality becoming a, a proper greenway, and I also want to see the Bally Castle to Ballymoney Greenway opening up opportunities beyond the city. I mean, I understand the argument for moving people uh, in cities uh, is greater than it maybe is in rural constituencies, but rural com communities need to be able to attain the same benefits uh, from greenways as urban uh, dwellers. I will support the Minister wholeheartedly in any investment that she can provide. In the South, uh, in June 2019, there was €40 million Euros announced for 10 new greenways. This is over and above the advanced state that they are compared to the North with regard to uh, greenway infrastructure. I mean, compare that to last year, uh, and I understand we, we didn't have a minister last year, but last year only €3 million was allocated to all cycling and walking infrastructure. Not even mentioning greenways. Uh, in 2000, sorry, the 2015 bicycle strategy uh, suggested 12.5 million within five years, 12.5 million per year over five years, and 18 million per annum within 10 years to build a comprehensive cycling network across the north. Uh, I, mean, I am enthusiastic about cycling. Uh, I'm delighted that, that I am able to cycle. Uh, in my view, cycling is a wonder drug uh, that can cure lots of ills in terms of society, climate change within the individual. My physical and mental health has certainly improved since I took up cycling. Not everyone accepts that, and not everyone has been open to uh, this wonder drug that is cycling yet. 
But, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a great fan of the film Field of Dreams, and I use the phrase, build it and they will come often, uh, Minister, and I think that uh, if you can build it, then people will come, and the North as a society and all citizens will benefit from it. Can I remind members not to walk in front of another member when he is speaking? I now call Mark Durgan. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Like the previous speaker, I might be a bit more geographically removed from the Comber Greenway, and I was certainly impressed by the very intricate knowledge demonstrated by some of our East Belfast members there. I think Chris Little knows every square inch of that Greenway. I was thinking of him now more as Crocodile Don Donald. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not a complete stranger uh, to the Greenway, however, and I do recall uh, on occasions during my time as a minister in this assembly, I would have had uh, my driver actually leave me on my way here in the mornings, six or seven miles out the, the, the road or along the Greenway, and I, I, I would have uh, run in. And the benefits that many of the members here uh, have mentioned, I did experience uh, them. It was a great way to clear the head, to prepare for the day ahead. And I probably got here quicker, though that's more a reflection on Billy's driving than it is my, my running, uh, to, 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 to be honest. So the, 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 the virtues of the, the Greenway, uh, or, or Greenways in general, ha, ha, have been stated. And uh, the Comber one is clearly something that's held very dearly by uh, people of the East Belfast constituency and uh, a true affinity for, with and affection for it uh, can be heard in the comments of the elected members. I think it, it, it's vitally important we do what we can to expand our Greenway network and I'm very heartened uh, by commitments or well, I suppose statements that have come uh, from the Minister uh, thus far and I think her presence here today is demonstrative of our commitment to improve our uh, green infrastructure. The benefits are manifold. The environmental ones are, are, are clear and obvious. They're there in the name, the, the, the Greenway. And then there are the economic benefits that aren't always as immediately obvious, although uh, some of those on the opposite benches, benches have mentioned them. And I've certainly seen it in, in other areas. I know I was fortunate enough to spend a couple of holidays in France, just outside Bordeaux, and need over 100 kilometres. Uh, uh, certainly. Yeah, I, I'm struck by the fact that the member was prepared to run five or six miles into the building. Uh, on a, I just perhaps I should have mentioned some of the statistics around, uh, and they are similar to, to your approach to things. Uh, people who were able to use a car to get to work instead chose the green people who could have used a car. 60% of them uh, chose to make their journey on foot or by cycle. A total of 245,422 people made trips on the route in 2012. And there's a significant increase uh, since then. 86% of people who used the route said it helped them to increase, just as you'd said, uh, uh, to increase their level of activity. The member's an extra minute. Thank you, and I thank the member for the intervention and, and articulating clearly there or demonstrating just how well used uh, the Comber Greenway is. And I think it is fair to assume that use increases on all our greenways uh, year on uh, year. I was touching there on the economic benefits and what I had uh, seen in France, and you don't have to go that. Uh, far afield uh, to see it. H however, the, the, you had cafes and coffee shops and that sprouting up al al along the route of the Greenway. I have to say, now, I, I was there for a couple of weeks and would have used the Greenway daily to, to go and do shopping. It was uh, a lot safer than trying to get used to driving on the right-hand side of, of the road as well. And uh, in County Mayo, too, we, we have a great uh, Greenway network that has delivered real, a real economic dividend uh, for that area. And many people come from far and wide, tourists, to uh, v v visit that. And I believe by investing more in our greenways, by marketing them better, that's, that's how more people are using them each way. Just e e even our, our own local people, often these greenways are 
among our best kept secrets, and I think we have to market them better. But whenever marketing, uh, be it individual constituencies or the North in general, uh, as a tourism destination, I think that's something that we, we should be putting uh, in, in the foreground too. There's a, there, there's a big uh, market for it, and I think we should become known more for our cycle paths than our psychopaths. Uh, I'll get on to my own constituency now, where we are blessed, despite our, our, our many hills. The cycling wouldn't always be that easy, although the Minister's pledged to deliver uh, on the EAPCs. might make it a bit e easier uh, for some. But we are blessed with a good uh, greenway infrastructure, and it's one that we hope to expand in the near future. There's a couple of cross-border projects funded through Europe, greenways running in the uh, Bunkrana and Muff in Donegal, and the Minister uh, would be extremely disappointed, I'm sure, if I don't mention the Strathfoyle Greenway. Uh, and we're her a long way from the Cumber Greenway. On which her officials have been uh, working hard. In the absence of Ministers, it has to say, because it would be, I suppose, remiss of us not to mention the fact that the absence of an Assembly for three years has cost us a lot of opportunities in terms of an improving our greenway please. infrastructure. <clears throat> and I now call on the Minister for Infrastructure, Ms Nicola Malm, to respond to the debate. The Minister will have 10 minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I would like to thank Mr Newton for instigating this debate on investment in the Cumber Greenway and for his acknowledgement of the commitment uh, and the work that has gone towards trying to progress the Cumber Greenway um, from the previous and the permanent perm secretary. It is appreciated. Um, this is not the first time that Mr Newton has uh, brought a debate to this floor on the Cumber Greenway. And I think it's testimony to his commitment that he has again brought an adjournment debate so early on uh, in our re-establishment. Uh, I want to thank him for his comments and for all of the comments made by members. It is very clear that all share a passion for active travel, for better connecting communities, uh, to create a green, safe space uh, where we can enhance our physical uh, and mental health. Um, on a general note, since I have been appointed Minister, I have made it clear that my focus is on doing what I can to improve the lives of everyone living right across Northern Ireland. As an important part of that focus, I want to increase the proportion of everyday journeys made by walking and cycling across the north. As Mr Newton uh, quoted, and it was so elegantly quoted, uh, greenways provide a rural escape from urban bustle. The benefits of developing greenways are many, and the health and lifestyle benefits are well understood and have been articulated by everyone in the chamber this evening. In addition, there are social and economic benefits for communities, in particular in building dynamic local communities and vibrant economies. Walking and cycling are key elements of thriving towns and cities. In addition, more walking and cycling, especially for shorter journeys, which make up one third of all the journeys that we all make every day, will help to create a cleaner environment and will ensure that all of us play our part in tackling the climate crisis. I recognise that greenways can help give people the freedom and confidence to walk, to start to cycle or to cycle more, all in a safe, traffic-free and pleasant environment, whether for commuting, travelling to and from school or going about our everyday business. They also provide opportunities for walking groups, opportunities for older people and, um, as Ms Bunting articulated, people of all ages for that matter, uh, to get active uh, and to have fun moments uh, of friendship. It is clear from experience with the Cumber Greenway that, the urban environment, uh, that in the urban environment, greenways have the significant benefit of improving off-road routes for commuting to and from work and places of education. The data from counters on the Cumber Greenway indicate that there are in the order of 300,000 journeys being made on the Greenway each year. In recent years, a total of £1.5 million has been invested in the Cumber Greenway route by my department and other stakeholders. As Ms Bunting referenced, this investment includes around £500,000 on widening the Greenway from 3 metres to 4 metres, and that was done in association with the Department for Communities. 
and around £500,000 has been invested in improving access points at the Graham's Bridge Road Junction and a new walking and cycling bridge at the Dundonald International Ice Bold, which was a Lisburn and Castlereagh City Council project supported by my department. So I want to assure members that I share their passion and I am keen to consider carefully how the development of greenways generally can deliver projects that have the potential to improve the lives of people and connect communities. I want to work collaboratively with other ministers, with councils and with other stakeholders to develop the Cumber Greenway and the other assets we have to make a real difference for our communities and to people's lives. Once the, bu the budget process provides clarity on the resources available to me, I will be able to firm up my objectives for cycling and active travel. I can, however, give members my firm commitment that delivering more ways for the public to access active travel will be part of my focus over the next two years. With budget pressures and environmental challenges, we need to think big and think boldly about how we can deliver radical change for our society, enhancing health uh, and improving well-being is key to connecting communities and tackling the climate crisis. With improving lives as our focus, we can and we will deliver more. Creative use of our spaces, such as the development of greenways, will help us achieve that vision. And I look forward to working in partnership to build successes already realised and deliver action on active travel. Turning to the specific points that members have raised during the debate, on the issue of lighting, uh, as Mr Newton pointed out, there has been some infrastructure put in place, ducting has been installed, but I do recognise the importance of lighting. As other members have referenced, lighting is key to enhancing greenways and to making people feel safe. I want to assure members that I want to see what more I can do to remove the barriers for people who want to walk and cycle more. Um, and in the budget settlement, when that becomes clear, it is an area that I want to focus on. But it's important to say I want to work in partnership with councils in terms of the delivery of that. Members also mentioned, Mr Newton, Mr Little and others, about trying to improve the attractiveness of our greenways as a community facility. That, yes, includes lighting, but it includes the provision of other facilities such as seating. I am keen to investigate the possibilities through working with the councils. Councils, as members well know, have wider powers in respect of community facilities, powers that my department does not have, um, and it would appear that they have scope to develop the Greenway as the linear park members have expressed support for. I agree with members that this is important in terms of delivering on physical and mental health and wellbeing responsibility outcomes in our programme for government. And so I am keen to work with members, but also to work with the three councils named as we try to move this forward. There is also a need, as members have referenced, to better connect our greenways. Um, and I need to back that commitment up with money. I understand that and I agree with the vision and the approach articulated by Mr McGuigan that if you build it, they will come. Um, so once, as the, um, the, once the budget is set, I, I want to see what I can to do to deliver on my vision um, for the Greenways. And I take on board the points raised by uh, Ms McElveen, Chair of the Infrastructure Committee. Um, she has been on fact-finding mission. She has been a minister. She understands. And I am aware of the grant support programme that she had. It is something that I am positively looking at. Um, and I'm also mindful that we need to learn the lessons around consultation and communication that she referred to. She is right. We need to build consensus and accommodation from those who use our greenways, but also from those who neighbour it. And I want to ensure that that lesson is learned going forward. I also want to thank um, those who spoke, Mr McGuigan and also uh, Mr Durkin, uh, spoke about the importance of greenways and made reference with your indulgence to issues within their own constituencies. Uh, I'm happy to try to pick that up because I do want to have a proactive and positive overarching uh, approach to our greenways. But in summing up, you members are right. The evidence is there, we know it is there, that greenways increase walking, they increase cycling, they address flood alleviation, they enhance biodiversity, you know, they grow local businesses. Um, the joy that it brings to children, be it Mr Allen's three children are rushing, 
that uh, Mr Little referred to. And as Ms McIlveen and Ms Bunting said, it is places where you can go to begin or to continue uh, a health kick or a place where you can just go with your friends to spend time to relax and enjoy each other's company. Um, so I want to do what I can. I believe the best way to do this is in partnership uh, with others. I think key to that is a, a proactive partnership between my department and the Department for Communities, um, but also councils and communities have a key role to play. I believe that great progress could be made in the further development of the Cumber Greenway by better partnership working between my department, and I'm willing to play my part in that, and the three councils that are particularly relevant to this case. As Mr Little said, there has been a steering group set up by my department and I have asked officials to re-engage and to step that process up a gear. So I recognise the importance of the Cumber Greenway. I again want to thank Mr Newton for bringing this issue to the floor and for all members uh, who spoke so passionately about the Cumber Greenway and the need for more greenways uh, across the north. I want to work with you and in partnership with others so that we can actually see that ambition for a greener, more sustainable, environmentally friendly, unconnected society delivered on the ground. Thank you, members. Members, the Assembly is now adjourned.